Okay, let's finish up the video talking about um, the last question out of factorial NOVA can answer, which is uh, one of the most difficult ones to think about. But it's one of the most useful features of a factorial NOVA, which is an interaction. And really, the best way to think about an interaction is simply, does one independent variable depend on the other independent variable? Does one factor depend on another? So following up on the example we started with in the preceding video, um, where we had two independent variables, a two by two factorial NOVA, where we had drug type, um, placebo versus drug, and we had treatment type, CBT versus no treatment. Um, let's just say that those who did have the CBT treatment had significantly fewer depressive symptoms than the non-treatment group, but that was only for those who received the drug. So essentially what that means is that yes there was a significant difference on the second independent variable on treatment type but it was really specific to just one of the levels of the independent variable so we can try to visualize that um, going back to those cells uh, in the two by two remember we have four cells so we have our two independent variables but the interaction essentially says that uh, on that IV2 on the treatment type independent variable or factor, um, CBT and the no treatment group did differ from each other, but maybe that difference only occurred at this one specific spot. So this is different from a main effect, obviously, because now we're saying that it does matter which cell that you're in, uh, which level of the other independent variable. So this is what we mean by interact. Now, uh, it is possible to have multiple main effects. When we talked about main effects, we said that, yes, you can have all the independent variables in the factorial NOVA have a main effect. Um, and it's also possible that you have all main effects significant and um, your interaction or multiple interactions are significant. So don't think that there's a restriction that if there is a main effect that there isn't an, in, uh, an interaction or if there is an interaction there isn't a main effect. They're not mutually exclusive. Um, you can have many main effects and many interactions depending on the factorial NOVA, so don't worry about that. Uh, but what you need to know is what are main effects and what are interactions. And I really wouldn't think too hard about them outside of what we just discussed here in the review video, which is uh, our definition of the main effects and then what we just discussed with the interactions. Um, you also want to know how to spot them in the output. So. Um, here's a uh, just sort of a made-up example. Let's say that you have a 2 by 3 factorial NOVA. And for one of the independent variables, you have uh, medication. Typo there. You have two medications, drug versus placebo, so very similar to that other independent variable we had in the preceding example. But you have three treatment groups. Uh, none. CBT and then DBT, which stands for dialectic behavior therapy. So we have a 2 by 3 factorial NOVA. Um, so just to be clear, IV1 over here, IV2 over here, and here's our levels. So uh, instead of in the ANOVA table or the F table, instead of seeing between our group under the source, the variance source, you actually see the name of the independent variable, the name of the factor and the interaction right there. Uh, so notice though that the within or the error term is still there. So just like it was in a one way, you see it there in a factorial NOVA. So that never really changes. Again, go back to your lab um, that covered factorial NOVAs and be familiar with those the output. Um, it looks similar to what we have going on here. It can be more complex, but we're just going to walk through an overall example here. But I do encourage you to look at your lab output. Be familiar with what it looks like. So uh, the degrees of freedom are going to be very similar to how they were in one way ANOVAs. It's really only more complex because we have multiple independent variables. Um, so we have multiple lines for group as opposed to one line for um, the very variant source being from group or variance between groups. Uh, we have multiple independent variables, so we have multiple between groups situations. So that's why there are more lines. Now, 
I'm looking at the calculations here, the degrees of freedom for each independent variable is just like it was before, where we had the number of groups or the number of levels minus one. So for, uh, let's change some colors here. So for medication group, we had two medication groups minus one. So over here for medication, the degrees of freedom is one. For treatment group, change colors once more for clarity. Three treatment groups, two degrees of freedom. Three minus one is two. Now the more complex, but also really not that much more complex, is going to be the one for the interaction. It's simply one times the other. So two times one equals two. Here's our interaction. Now the easiest one is the one that we uh, have been doing for quite some time now. Number of people minus one. That's the total one here. So again, these are some sort of made up numbers, uh, but you see how the math still adds up. If you were to uh, do the properties, the DF total still works. If we were to add all these together, we would get 17. And the same works for the sums of squares. But really, what's most important is that you just interpret what is going on here. So, let's go back to highlighting. Um, just looking at the results, let's look down here in the table. We see for medication that we had a significant because our P, our significance value is less than 0.05. So we say that there is a main effect of medication. For our second independent variable treatment, again, we can look over here and we see that P is less than 0.05. So we also have a main effect of treatment. So that should say And then finally, we can look at our uh, interaction here. All right, let me pick a color. There we go. Our interaction, medication by treatment. We see that our P is less than 0.05, and so we say that there is a significant interaction of medication by treatment. Now, looking at uh, our numbers here, our degrees of freedom, you should see where the numerator comes from. But again, the within or the error is still used as the denominator in all of those. So here's a different example. And this one looks a little more complex simply because it is a uh, three by four. So just looking at the interpretations here, let's look at the exercise independent variable, the exercise factor. Um, and let's just say we realize, okay, P is less than 0.05, so we have a main effect of exercise. And where everything comes from, just highlight that for clarity. Now, looking at everything else, I'll go with one color from here out. For age group, not significant. For the interaction, exercise by age group, also not significant. So, no difference there. Okay, so that is a review over all the really important things you need to know for the exam. Again, you hopefully have noticed that there are no long multi-step calculations. Everything seems awfully focused on understanding the output, understanding the tables, how those table properties work and how to interpret 
um, those tables and the output from one way Novus, how to interpret output from multiple comparison procedures, and how to interpret output from uh, factorial Novus. Um, that sounds like that must be pretty important as opposed to uh, making all these small calculations that lead you to that table, um, which is why you didn't see anything covering that. So hopefully this helps. Let me know if you have any questions in the meantime. Otherwise, good luck.